Hello everyone, my name is Monica and I work for California State Parks at Hearst San Simeon State Park. Uh, thank you so much for joining for today's episode of Freestyle Friday. You're probably wondering, Monica, what is on your head? Well, this is a black oyster catcher headband. It's a type of shorebird and today uh, I want to invite you to make your own uh, shorebird headband with me. So yesterday on our Facebook page we posted some blank coloring pages for you to uh, color at home and print out for this craft. So you might have seen this full bodied black oyster catcher or just the black oyster catcher head. You can use whichever one you want. I chose to use the head but you can use the body if you'd like. And the only other materials you'll need besides those coloring pages are a stapler, a pair of scissors, something to color with, so colored pencils, markers, crayons, anything, and then a long strip of paper. And I didn't have any paper that was longer than standard size, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut uh, a piece of paper in half and then staple these together for one long strip, and I'll give you more details about how to do that at the end of this video. All right, so we're going to be making that craft today, uh, but first I want to tell you a little bit about the black oyster catcher. So this is a black oyster catcher. And it's a type of shorebird, so you might see it hanging out near the shore where the, where the ocean meets the rocks. They have a really wide range of habitat, or a wide uh, range. They are all the way from Alaska all the way down to Baja, California. But their habitat is just in that small area, in those rocky uh, shoreline areas where the water meets the rocks. So it's a pretty large bird. It's about the size of a duck, I would say, maybe a little bit smaller, but it's got all black feathers and then it has that very prominent long orange bill and brightly colored eyes. So you might have seen this bird hanging around these areas. You might have also heard this bird. They have a very large, uh, a loud call. Uh, but this is the bird that we'll be talking about today. Now, what does the black oyster catcher do uh, in its habitat, in those rocky areas along the shore? Well, it's going to be looking for food. So they are going to be eating uh, a few different things. And although their name is oyster catcher, they actually don't eat a whole lot of oysters, which is kind of funny. But they eat a lot of mussels. So uh, if you know what mussels are, mussels are those black uh, with bluish or purplish tints. They're those shells that are kind of teardrop shaped and they open up like this. So you might have seen uh, them on the beach or maybe half of one on the beach. That's what these black oyster catchers eat. They will use their long orange bill to pry them open and eat what's inside and then they leave the shells, uh, they leave the shells behind. They also lay their eggs on these rocks. So their eggs are, uh, they just lay them directly on the rocks and it's, again, it's right where the, the water meets the shore. So those eggs are actually super vulnerable to waves. Uh, and they're also super vulnerable to rising sea levels. Uh, so with climate change comes rising sea levels. So uh, their whole habitat and their whole life can be totally affected uh, by rising sea levels because they only live in a very small uh, area along the shore. That's where they spend their whole life. So that is a little bit about our black oyster catcher. So I want to invite you all to uh, start coloring the coloring pages. So you can color uh, your full bodied black oyster catcher or you can color uh, just the head of the black oyster catcher. And you don't have to color it like I did. I just wanted to color it uh, pretty similarly to our black oyster catcher, but you can color it whatever color you want. And while you're coloring, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about what it means to be seabird safe. So go ahead and start coloring and uh, I'll just share with you some of these things that we have here about what it means to be seabird safe. So uh, we have an acronym here, so we have the word SAFE and a little phrase for you to keep in mind while you're exploring your coastal areas. So first for S, stay back from cliffs and rocks. Now why would we want to do that? Well remember, the black oyster catchers along with a, a lot of other uh, shorebirds lay their eggs on these rocks. So if we are out exploring our coast or tide pooling, we want to be super careful of where we step because that could be uh, where seabird or shorebird eggs are located. Uh, what about A? Always leash your pet. That's another thing that we want, want to keep in mind because if your pet is not on the leash, it might run off and scare birds away. Uh, and they might scare birds away from their nests. 
So they would leave their eggs behind and their eggs could be taken by a predator or washed away uh, by waves. So these birds want to be able to protect their nests and if they uh, are scared away from their nest, they won't be able to protect their eggs. What about F? Feed yourself, not wildlife. Now that's a really important thing too. So all of nature gets their food from nature. So uh, if we are giving them food that we eat, that humans eat, their bodies might not be used to it, uh, they might not be able to process it, and they, uh, they might get really used to human uh, presence. And if, a, and if a, a wild animal gets really used to having a human around, uh, that makes it really vulnerable because if it, it starts to go to more areas where there's a lot of humans, they could actually be harmed by uh, lots of different things like cars or just uh, people who aren't careful. So feeding uh, yourself and not wildlife helps keep these uh, wild animals safe and healthy. And what about E, the last one? Enjoy seabirds from afar. That's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, when we view these seabirds, they're along our coastline, uh, and that is their habitat. That is where they live. So we want to make sure that we're not disturbing uh, where they live, that we're respecting their natural boundaries, and just enjoying them from afar, not getting too close to their spaces. So that's what it means to be seabird safe. I encourage you to follow these uh, safety guidelines when you do explore your coastlines. Uh, I also want to show you now how to make your seabird headband. So hopefully you are done coloring uh, one of these uh, now. If not, that's okay. Uh, we're going to move forward, but you can uh, still start when you're done coloring. So I already have a uh, black oyster catcher head colored and cut out. So you want to make sure that you cut out your seabird. And next we want to make our headband shape. So I'm going to set this aside for now. It's colored and cut out. And I want to make my headband shape. So again, I have this piece of paper here. It's not long enough by itself to cover around my head, but if I cut it in half and attach it together, then I will have one that is long enough cover around my head. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to staple these together so that it's one long strip. And I'm going to fit it around my head to see uh, where it needs to be secure. So I'm going to take this off and you might need a parent to help you figure out how big it needs to be, but just hold it in the back where it, uh, where it feels good. My head's a little too big for this, so this is not going to fit very well. And just staple it uh, where your head is in a good secure spot, and now you have your headband shape. So next what you want to do, you want to take your cutout seabird and you want to staple it to your headband. And what I like to do, I like to put uh, the bottom of its head along the bottom of the headband, so that way only the nose uh, is along my face. And all I'm going to do is just staple it, so, oops, staple it together, and voila, I have my black oyster catcher headband. Now we would love to see your seabird headbands, so when you're done making your black oyster catcher craft, we'd love it if you or your parents took a picture and you can post it to our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We'd love to see it. Um, so yeah, show us your show us your seabird headbands. And I would also like to say thank you so much for doing your part in order to help flatten the curve of COVID-19. We appreciate you staying home and making sure that you're washing your hands and uh, using that six foot social and physical distancing when you do need to go outside. Uh, we know that you're missing your state parks, exploring your trails and uh, beaches, but Thank you for staying home during this time. We hope that some of these videos can help bring the parks to you when you are unable to go outside and explore them yourself. So keep an eye out for more videos and posts from us on our social media pages. And we hope to uh, see your seabird headbands very soon. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye.